In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a LEMP server on Rocky Linux. And LEMP is an acronym that stands for Linux, Nginx, MySQL, or Maria Database and PHP. And this is a server stack that allows you to run a website or a web application on top of it. So if that's something you want to learn how to do, let's go ahead and get on into it. I will assume that you have Rocky Linux installed. If you don't, I have some credits down below that you can get started with it for free on a VPS. And that is what I have here on my screen. I'm logged into my Vulture VPS and let's get started. Let me prove to you that I am actually indeed running Rocky Linux. So I can look at the uh, OS release file under the ETC directory and I am indeed running Rocky Linux version 8 dot five so as always good practice before we do anything any major installs on the system let's do an update or an upgrade and um, the equivalent for you know if, if you're on uh, Red Hat or CentOS you use a yum package manager if you're on um, Ubuntu or Debian you use apt or apt get the equivalent for that on Rocky Linux is called DNF and in order to uh, update our system, upgrade our system, we can do DNF upgrade. Now, I did that a little bit uh, before this video, so all my packages are up to date, but this can take anywhere from, you know, a couple seconds to a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes to update all your packages, you know, depending on your hardware and your bandwidth and all that stuff. So um, go ahead and do that first, but then we can go ahead and install the LEMP server. So we, we already have Rocky Linux that takes care of the L, E is Nginx. It's spelled with an N, but they say E for Nginx because it sounds like an E. Uh, so let's go ahead and install Nginx with DNF. So DNF install Nginx. And this is uh, a small package, um, 14 megabytes. So we'll go ahead and do that and skip forward through this. Okay, and just a few moments later, we have Nginx installed. Let's start that up with system CTL start Nginx and that's going to allow Nginx to run um, right now. So let's verify that that is the case, systemctl status Nginx, and it is indeed active and running. That's good. Um, if we want Nginx to automatically start when our server reboots or starts up, we can do systemctl enable Nginx, and that'll go ahead and take care of um, setting up that service. Okay. At this point, uh, we do have Nginx running. Let's verify that with a web browser. So I'm gonna open up Google Chrome and get my IP address. What was my IP address? Right here. So let me type that in 174.138.61.103. Hit enter. And we see the default landing page for Nginx on Rocky Linux. So Great progress so far. We have a, a, a website. And as it says here, these the, the files that are serving this page are located at user share nginx html. So let's check that out on our uh, terminal window. Let's go to that directory. And in here we have a index file, a logo, two, two uh, images, and then a 404 and a 50x.html file. Um, these are the error pages. These are the error pages, and this is the file that we're looking at. So let me let me just prove that. Let's look look at index.html, uh, and we don't have Vim on this. Um, feel free to use whatever text editor. I prefer Vim. There's a, a light version of that called VI, which they should have. They do. Um, let's see. Let's search for has been. These words right here has been. And there it is. So HTTP server after it has been installed. And let's just modify that to prove that we're looking at the same thing. Yo. And if we refresh this page back here, that shows up. So um, very good. This is this is the root of our website. Now, uh, so LEMP, Linux, Nginx, MySQL, Marita database, or one of those two, or PHP and PHP. Um, what should we do next? Let's go ahead and look at PHP. Um, let me, let's see what version of PHP, if any, we have installed by default. PHP-B, uh, PHP is not installed. So let's go ahead and check out what we have 
as options for PHP to install. So you can do DNF module list PHP. And that's going to tell us uh, what we can enable and install. So they have PHP 7.2, 3, and 4, and it looks like 7.2 is the default. Uh, but let's say I want 7.4 to be the version of PHP that I want to use. So we can do DNF module enable PHP colon 7.4, hit enter. And now that we uh, have enabled PHP 7.4, uh, well, actually, it's asking us if this is okay, so type yes, hit enter. Okay, so that's complete. Um, now we can install PHP 7.4 with DNF. So DNF install PHP, hit enter, and I just want to show you what this is actually going to install for us. So not only is it going to install PHP, but it's also going to install PHP FPM, which is uh, necessary for allowing Nginx to talk to PHP. It's like a module uh, that acts as an intermediary between the two and a whole bunch of other ones, including PHP common. Um, so that's good. Uh, just reviewed that, hit Y and then enter to download and install those packages. And we will again, skip forward through this. All right, so we have PHP. Let's verify that with PHP-V, and we are indeed running PHP version 7.4. Now, there's a in order to have PHP play with Nginx uh, correctly, let's edit this file at etc php-fpm.d, and then www.conf. And uh, by default, it's kind of assuming that you're going to use um, Apache but we are not. So let me, what are we, we're looking for? Group and user. Right here, um, user Apache, group Apache. We need to change that to Nginx. So go ahead and do that and save that file. Now, since we made a change to that file, the PHP FPM file, let's do a system CTL um, start PHP dash FPM. Not sure if that was already started. We probably could have checked. But anyway, system S Y S T E M C T L status PHP dash F P M. And oh, I cannot spell today. System S Y S, an extra Y in there. So the status uh, PHP F P M is active and running. Let's, same thing as before, if we want it to start up automatically when our server reboots, we can do system C T L enable php fpm and i think for good measure at this point let's just do a system ctl restart nginx just to make sure i'm not sure if that's necessary but just to make sure that we're all good so um before in here we were working with an html file let's test out a php file so let's let's just get rid of this index html file and make a new file called index.php and um, you can do something very there's a lot of cool tricks that you can do with PHP but we're just going to do something very simple some dynamic right so PHP gives us the ability to make dynamic HTML pages um, we're going to echo inside of the PHP block the time is and then hours minutes seconds so we'll save that and that that'll execute on the server generate the HTML send it over to the client uh, so if you go back here and we don't, we shouldn't have to explicitly go to index.php, um, but let's just do that. Index.php, hit enter, and yep, the time is 3:15:54 p.m. And if you go refresh it, the time will update. So we have PHP dynamically uh, generating pages, and let's see if that matches up with the server time, and it does for for UTC. Okay, so that takes care of Linux. Um, Nginx, PHP, now let's do the database. MySQL, we're going to do Maria database in this case. So we can do that with DNF install Maria, M-A-R-I-A DB uh, dash server, hit enter. And you should be used to it that at this point, uh, it's going to install, download 31 megs, install 156 megs. So Y, hit enter, and we will fast forward through this. Okay, that has been downloaded and installed. You guys know the routine, systemctl start maria db, 
hit enter system ctl status maria db and that is active and running and then system ctl enable maria db and again that's going to allow this service to start up when the system starts up. So a good practice um, is to do the secure installation step after you install. So we can do that with mysql underscore secure underscore installation. Hit enter. Oh, they don't have that mysql secure installation. Um, Okay, forget that I said that. Okay, so we won't do too much with it in this tutorial, but I just wanna show you how you can access the MySQL command line. Um, and you can do that with MySQL. Uh, I think, let's just try MySQL without any credentials. That works. Um, if it, This is a fresh install, but sometimes, uh, let's exit out of here. Sometimes you might have to do MySQL dash u user root root dash p and then provide your password, uh, but we don't have that password information at this point. So uh, we can just use our root user to log in directly. Um, in here, quick overview of MySQL, you can look at the databases with show databases, semicolon, and we have just three uh, databases here. Uh, you can create, you can create a database, you can, uh, let's, let, we won't do that, but let's look at the tables inside of MySQL. So use MySQL to look at that database only and then show the tables associated with MySQL. And these are just the default tables that are uh, that come packaged with MySQL. So I, I, I was going to go into a little bit of um, how to do MySQL, but I have a whole video on that, uh, how to interact with pages and PHP and all that stuff. So check that out. Or more importantly, if you want to learn how to install an actual website like WordPress on this, then I have another video for you about that as well. I will see you guys over there.